talking a lot on the conscience. I think for the last two months we've been talking about how circumstances and how spirit and different things can detour our mind, can change us, and turn us around. And it's all because God, the devil that is, is trying to get us off track. And the only way he can get us off track, he got to come with tactics. So I think that after I do this tonight, I pray and believe that God will turn me loose and let me get back where I want to talk about the word of faith. But until we get this thing, I feel it in my heart that everybody got it and realize that life is nothing but a setup and realize that the devil is trying to set you up for destruction. And we got to guard our minds, guard our hearts and recognize the tactics of the enemy. Can you say thank you, Lord? I'm going to be talking tonight from the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, the third chapter, 1 through 11. Ain't God good? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Glad I got this. That's mighty small. Hallelujah. Okay, the third chapter. 1 through 11. It says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time even to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace. And there's also a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. Wow. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit it if he that worketh all therein that laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in. There's a time for everything. Hallelujah. Verse 11 says it like this. He hath made everything beautiful in its own time. I want y'all to hear me now. Everything I mentioned there is beautiful, but it's beautiful in its own time. If it's out of time, it's not beautiful. 
Dying is beautiful in its own time. He say, man, weeping is beautiful in its own time. Laughter is beautiful in its own time. Everything that God has done, whether it look good, look bad, it's beautiful if it's in time. Y'all got to get with me tonight because God got something heavy on my heart. He's letting me see things. I'm not even a, I don't consider myself a prophet, but I can just see what's ahead if I don't warn the people. There is a time and a season to every purpose. Let's go to purpose now. What is purpose? Purpose is something staged, arranged, or set up to obtain a designated end. Everything got a purpose. Everything is staged. And everything is set up to get to where you are trying to get or for the devil to get to where he's trying to get. Everything is staged and set up, purpose, aligned to reach a certain destination. Ain't God good? Ain't it good? I want y'all to stay with me on that. I'm going to title this message, It's a Setup. And by saying that, I mean that everything is staged and purpose to get you where, the, where, you, where you're going. And it's not, some of the purposes are good. The purpose that God has is a good guideline for you to get where you want to go or where God is trying to take. It's purpose. You are being led this way. You are being guided this way to get to where God is trying to get you. Well, the devil also has a purpose to get you off track. Show you things that may be good, but it's out of time. Y'all ain't listening to me. He can show you things that you will receive, but it's a setup. He'll show you things that you know uh, that look good, but it's a setup. That's what I like about checkers and chess. When you play checkers or when you play chess, the board is staged and it's set up. I don't know if you know about chess or not, but the object is to get to the kingdom. Y'all listening to me? You have a knight that's staged and set up. And then not only that, but you have a bishop hiding behind the knight. Y'all listen to me? Looks like everything is so good, everything is so perfect, but it's a setup. The moment you move this knight in the wrong direction, you open up an angle that's hidden behind another angle to capture you. Everything is beautiful, but everything, some things are set up. Y'all listen to me. God told me to warn the people tonight about the great setup. Because it looks good. It doesn't mean that it's always the right what? Time. Good God of mine. Keep these things in mind. Purpose. Time. He say, man, might be the right thing, but is it the right time? For these things. Everything is beautiful in its own timing. Ain't God good? And if it's not in the timing, or if it's not, it's a setup. Y'all listening to me? God is good. Now, uh, Jonah. If you remember in the book of Jonah, God told Jonah to go to uh, uh, Nineveh and he went to Tosh. In other words, he disobeyed God. When he disobeyed God, there was a chastening, listen to me, on his life. That means that he wasn't in favor with God. Y'all listen. He had lost his favor with God because of disobedience. And when he got on the boat, hallelujah, the, the, the boat began to reel and rock. All because of one man's disobedience. The people on the boat had to throw their stuff off the boat because they were going to die and sink because one man had gotten on the boat. He said, amen. Everybody can't ride on your boat. Y'all ain't listening to me. Everybody can't go with you. 
Everybody can't be entangled with you. God is separating night from day. When Jonah disobeyed, everything went chaotic. And the people around him began to sink. Y'all ain't listening to me. I, I, I'm trying to explain this the best way that God has given me the wisdom and knowledge to do without being offensive or to be uh, that you can continue to walk with me as a, as a, as a teacher. Everybody can't ride on your boat. I'm going to show you this. I'm not going to just talk about it. I'm going to show you what the Bible says about it. When there is a, 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 a disobedience or something going contrary to God's will, you can't hook up with. You can't hook up with everybody that's on your job. It's a setup. Even though they're nice, even though they're good, uh, laughs are good to be around, but it's a setup to get you off of what God has for you. God got something for you, but you got to be aware of the setup. It doesn't mean that Jonah was a bad man. Jonah wasn't a bad man, but Jonah was contrary to the will of God, and that made him a trap for others. Y'all ain't listen. Everybody can't, uh, how can I put it? He said that, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because if you've got spirits of walking around in your house, your house is contaminated with evil spirits. I ain't saying they can't come in, go out. When they go out, they know it's your house. But everybody can't be under your dwelling. Me and my house. We must serve the Lord. And I don't mean when I go to church, you got a little child and you make him go. I'm talking about serving the Lord. I'm talking about when you serve the Lord, you're being obedient to the voice of God. And when I say believing in God, I'm talking about the Greek word pistio. You trust, believe, and obey God. If you're obeying God and believing in God and trusting him, your occupants got to be the same way, or your boat is going to sink. It's a setup. I wish I could scream. It's a setup. I've seen so many things down through the years. I, 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 me and one of our preachers were going to get, a, going to get a, a church building. And I told him, I said, now, this is, this is the throw-off here. What you coming up here for? I said, to deter us from what we're looking for. It's, it's, it's a setup. You can see setups coming from a long way off. It may look like it's the right thing to do, maybe a good gesture, but your timing is off. Y'all listen tonight? I'm going to move on. Matthew 45, 5 and 45, he says that he caused the sun to shine on both good and evil, and his rain to fall on the just as well as the unjust. Everybody can't ride with you. Because when the thunder comes, you can be a man of God, but it's going to, uh, if, if there's somebody in your surroundings or you are close to and in your dwelling, when, 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 the, when the lightning comes, it ain't just, just going to hit him, it's going to hit you too. He causes good and evil to fall. He, 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 let's read it out he said, he causes the sun to shine on both the good man and the evil man. And his rain to fall on the just man as well as the unjust man. If you're there, it's going to hit you. When he's blessing, you better run around somebody that's getting blessed. Y'all don't believe this, do you? If you see blessings continue to fall on a person, run under them. Go right there, because when God blessing them, some of them going to fall on you. And the curse coming, you better run from them, because when he hit them, he's going to hit you. Everybody can't ride with you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to shorten this thing. I had already said I wasn't going to be here. Just I, I want to give it to you as God has given it to me because it's so important. I, my spirit is crying. I see so much that's going on, and we think that we're in the right, but because our hearts are right. But it's a setup. 
Be aware of the setup. If 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 you what I say about Luke, I got Luke in here. No, yeah, Luke. Let's go to Luke eighteen, eight sixteen and eight. Luke eight sixteen. Let me show you. Let me show you what happens when your heart is right. When your heart is right. I don't think I got Luke. Luke. I can't see it. See this. Luke eighteen. What did I say? Luke what? Luke, uh, Luke 8, 16 through 8. Okay. Let's see what Luke says about it. Luke 8. Luke 8 is trying to describe something to keep us aware of the tactics of the enemy. Luke 8. Amen. Let's go uh, 8, uh, 16. Uh, okay. Eight, uh, 16 says, A man, when he has lighted a candle, Oh, no man we have lighted a candle covered it with a vessel or put it this under a bed, but shut it, but, but set it this on a candlestick that they which enter may see the light. Nothing is secret. No, not. I'm going to 18. This is the time when they were talking about God, Jesus was said that the word of God is like seed that's being planted. Y'all remember that? Some was choked by the weeds. Some was trotted under the men's feet. The bird came and ate some of the seed. And then some of the seeds fell on good ground and it fell in the man's heart. But the enemy came to pluck it out of his heart before it had been received. That means he heard it he loved it, but the enemy come to pluck it out of it. It's in this chapter here. And the what, 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 what he, how he plucked it out is by the things that he was saying, the word. The word came to pluck the word out. This thing was in your heart. You're feeling good. But the setup was you heard what the devil said. You used to love to go to church. This is when he real close to you. He can talk to you. You love to go to church. You love to do what God called you to do in the church. And all of a sudden, you hear, the, you hear this thing say, oh, ain't nothing. You got to go to no church to go to hell. The Bible ain't say you ain't got to drink no, you can't drink no liquor. You hear all kind of things that go against your real true inner man. Why you hear it? Because it's right next to you. Y'all ain't listening. Everything that gave you so much joy to go do, now you hear this in your ear. Oh, you ain't got to do that. God ain't say, God ain't say you can't smoke no cigarette. He ain't said you can't drink a little liquor. Did so and so drink liquor? Did, did he make one? You hear all this stuff in your ear, and the word of God says when the seed was being planted right before the birth of everything you've been praying for, right before it come to fruition, smashed out of your heart. And then it says it like this, verse 18. It says, Take heed, therefore, how you hear. For whatsoever have, take heed how you hear. If people are talking different than what the, 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 what, what's got you where you, that brought you from to where you are now, if they're talking differently than that, you better get away from them. Just like you can sow good seed, you can reap bad seed. Everybody can't be in your ear. You don't know why you be acting, or you don't know why you ain't got the joy you had. Your joy is gone. Hallelujah. You was happy, uplifted, but it steals your joy, steals your peace. Come to confuse you. When you were saying, I'm, I'm going to do this, I ain't doing nothing. Be careful how you hear. And you can't hear if they're not in your ear. Can't let everything go in your ear. And they can't go in your ears if you keep your way, keep away from them. It ain't time. Ain't God good? Now, I'm gonna sum it up. Second Chronicles 25, 1 and 9. I hope y'all getting something out of this because I didn't come to make you shout tonight. I come as a warning. Amen. Come as a warning to the things that I have seen happen so many times, and I've cried about it so many times. Why didn't you tell them? 
I'm, I can't, you can't say that today. I'm telling you, all the people out there in Facebook land. Now, I know we in here already know. Everybody can't be on your boat. Y'all listening to me? It ain't nothing but a setup. Don't be set up like that. Okay, Second Chronicles. I'm going to get out of here. 25, 1 through 9. Okay, 2 Chronicles 25. It says that when Amazon was 20, uh, five years old, when he had begun to reign, and he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jordan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was good in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Uh-oh. Did good, but not with a perfect heart. Now what came to pass, when the kingdom was established to him, that he slew the servants that killed the king and his father. But he, he, uh, but he slew not the children, but did that which is written in the law, in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying that the children should not suffer for the works of the father. Y'all listen to me. Kind of lengthy, but I want you to listen to the last. It's, it's going to give you a point here. But even man shall die for his own sin. Moreover, when Amaziah gathered together Judah and made them captains over thousands and captains over hundreds of thousands, according to the houses of their father throughout Judah, uh, and, and found them three uh, hundred thousand choice men of valor ready to go to war. He had also a hundred thousand men, mighty men of valor, out of, the land, out, of, out of the land. Now, this is what he did. He's getting ready to go to war. And he said, I'm going to buy me 100,000 men. And he gave these men a million dollars apiece. I'm going to put it in that number. Making them rich if you just go and fight with me. Who he hired was his cousin. Now, he had uh, Judah. He had Israel. Judah went and had, and had his cousin from Israel. Now, these two had been in war for years against each other. Why were they at war with each other? Because both of them were mighty nations. And, and, and they had and certain, certain companies or certain groups would hire, hire Judah, and the other group would hire Israel. So they were really in war with each other. But he says, now, if you take Israel with you, you're going to lose the battle. Because I'm not with Israel. Everybody can't ride on your boat. This is the, I'm going to give you the victory, but you can't put him on the boat. It's a setup. I don't care how strong they are, how brave they are, and the good chore that he's doing it's not the right timing. I have something against, against Israel. They are walking in disobedience, and I'm chastening them. I'm trying to get them in line. And if you take them with you, you're going to fall. And he looked around. He said, yeah, I understand, God, but what about the money? What about the investment that I put in these people? I just put a million dollars in them. And God said, the Lord can give you much more than this. It's not a loss. I've been with this man for 20 years. And what about how all that time I done spent? Think I better let him go. God can give you much more than this. The whole time it ain't been nothing but a setup. But it's your time now to enjoy the victory, but you got to come from among them and be ye separate. Because God is not with them. Y'all hear me? God is only with his children, not those that walk in disobedience. And what happened, when they went on down to fight, uh, 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 Judah got angry. They got angry because they knew that this, they gonna, Israel was going to win the war anyway. And they were going to have all these spoils. You know what I'm talking about? Take all this gold. Take all this, this million dollars. Ain't nothing what God's been to do for them. He can give you much more. That million dollars they had was nothing to compare for what God is getting ready to do for them. And, 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 and Israel knew it. 
They got mad and wanted to go at war with them because they didn't want to be left out of it. It's going to be hard to get rid of them because they don't want to be left out of the blessing. Do y'all hear me? Go back there, Scotty. I'm going to stay still. You don't want, you, you don't want to be left out of the blessing. But I'm saying all of this here, and I know it's not a scattering, but it's in my heart to give it to you tonight. Everybody can't ride on your boat. It's usually nothing but a setup to take you away from what God, the victory, in which God is trying to bring you through. Ain't God good? It's a setup. It's a setup. If you're not a God, if they're not talking the same way you talk, don't you listen to the way they talk. The way you got to where you are is by listening to the voice of God. Not the voice of saying, you ain't got to be this way. Y'all listen. It's a setup. Something is behind every move you make. Something is behind it. There's a purpose behind it. And it's not always a good purpose. Maybe a good gesture, but the wrong time. Ain't God good? I hope you've gotten something. Look it up, Scotty. I, ho I hope you've gotten something from this. Thank you, sir. I hope you've gotten something from this because it's a tedious time. And the devil is after your goods. And he sent me here tonight to warn the people out there. Don't think everything that looks good is good. It's a setup. You've gotten to where you got to by obeying God and doing what God told you. And you're joyful, you're happy, you're content. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, the things start getting in your ear. That's different from what you've been doing. It causes discontent. God is not the author of confusion. He is the author of peace, joy, and happiness. Ain't God good? Beware of the setup. Setup comes when you let people ride on your boat. They can use their tactics to overflow you. Out there in media land, I thank God for you tuning in. Wasn't a lot of screaming and hollering tonight, but I tell you, these words, God gave them to me to warn somebody that because it looks good, it's not always good. If they're not speaking your language, if they're not serving your God, it is nothing but trouble. Stick to what brought you here and let God guide you on. Father, in the name of Jesus, we truly thank you, Lord God, for these remarks that you allowed me to share tonight, ones that I didn't want to bring. I wanted to shout and have a good time, but Lord, we need it all. We need to know the tactics when they come our way, and we thank you for your warning, God, and we're going to take heed. We're going back to where we come from, trusting and depending on the Lord that brought us this far. I thank you for tuning in tonight. Those of you that not saved and don't even understand what I'm talking about. This is a spiritual thing. And the only way you can see these things I'm talking spiritual, you have to be a spiritual being. And the only way you can become a spiritual being is by giving your life to the Lord. Forgetting about those things that are behind and say, Lord, I want to be in the kingdom of God. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. And mean it from the depths of your heart. God hears the honest cry. And he'll invite you in, invite you in, and you'll never be the same again. We thank you, we praise you, and we give your name all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
in Jesus' name. Anyone needing prayer tonight? We got a wedding coming up Sunday. A big old wedding. Ain't God good? I don't think, I don't, I don't know. Groom, you going to be here Sunday? Huh? You won't be here Sunday. We got a big wedding coming up Sunday. Y'all keep this wedding. Y'all keep this wedding in prayer. Amen. Because it's a, you going to need some prayer. Yeah, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to need some prayer. Devil, you, think, you think the devil going to let you get away like that? You done lost your mind. You got to show you got, you got to fight? <laughs> well, you better look at her then. Well, I got some words for you. About Toby McGee. Toby McGee, this is your last one. You better run for your life. <laughs> I don't, don't care about what the people say out there. Church, hey, Scott. Hey, close your eyes.